USC folks, Ospreys and Connick, 19 points to 22. Connick get it done. It's a Jack Cardi drop goal. That's the difference maker in this one. We're we'll going through some key events and stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. Obviously, this was the uh, the secondary game for mine after watching uh, some international rugby this morning. I got up early to watch the Scots and the Aussies, and then um, yeah, finished it off with a bit of the old URC. Six tries. Although the game felt like it was a little bit stop-start for, for periods. But um, still, uh, for Connick, it's another good win. After kind of a tough start to the season. And for the Ospreys, mm, they'll be a bit disappointed they couldn't capitalise on their flying start. Because they were 12-0 up by 10 minutes. Sutton gets the first one from a kick through uh, on like 2 minutes to make it 7-0. And then when, um, when Kieran Williams and Morgan Williams go blindside uh morgan williams being the double barreled surname uh is ruben isn't it ruben morgan williams um yeah they go blindside play a nice little one two 12 nil up it's all looking peachy for the ospreys boys uh however a um a tip tackle from ethan roots meant a yellow card for the ospreys guys so down to 14 men and you can feel kind of, kind of settling into the game and um, slowly kind of wrestling the momentum away from the Ospreys, guys. Admittedly, uh, there was no damage done during the yellow card itself. Though. I mean, the Connick guys did get held up on about 20 minutes. Uh, but no, they couldn't score any points, the Ospreys. Uh, the Connick guys and Ospreys did well to, um, to clear it, actually. A bit of quick thinking. And when they when they held the Connick guys up, they kind of took the the goal line dropout quickly. They they just grubber kicked it to to Nagy, the fullback, and then he on his own just was able to kind of hoof it clear. So it was a really good bit of quick thinking. You like to see that kind of innovative play rather than just settle down, um, you know, kick it to the Connick guys and give them another chance to attack. No, they they used their noggins and um, and managed to have a pretty good exit. But you could still feel the Connick pressure was going to pay. Like, Ospreys were holding on, but, yeah, it, it was certainly coming. Uh, Max Nagy, when he kicked it out on the full, uh, didn't help matters. And that, I think, kind of sadly for him, despite that good kick earlier, it pretty much directly leads to some Connick points, right? Because he kicks it out on the full, means Connick come back into Ospreys' territory, and um, Connick go 10 phases in, uh, in Ospreys' territory, and eventually... They get it out to that right wing. And Wooten goes over. It's a good conversion to make it 12-7. And then another one only a few minutes later. I mean, from an Ospreys point of view, you'll be a bit frustrated with uh, the kind of quick succession of the tries. For Connick, maybe a little bit of not being able to get more out of it. Like, they, they could have potentially got a bonus point if they'd been able to score more than just this kind of 10-minute period in which they did score. But, I mean, they'll be pleased to come back because, as I said... Um, it's a scrum set play. Tom Farrell with a big old line break. That was pretty nice. Hawkshaw goes close. And uh, Blade, quick thinking, just to dot the thing down from um, from the side of the ruck. So 14-12 lead at halftime for Connick, having been 12-0 down at 10-minute mark. Not a bad, not a bad comeback. Um, Connick have dominated the position 55%. The territory 59%. They've had more defenders beaten four by uh, the Ospreys 9 by Connick, but interestingly, the Ospreys have had two clean breaks and they've had two tries. So uh, when they did manage to get, as I said, uh, that early momentum, they, they took the most out of it. Second half, as I said, it kind of got worse for the Ospreys guys because they, they continue to see, point, can see points. Morgan Morris basically just coughed up the ball on his own line as they were trying to set up an exit play and um, they get it to Porch and they punish. So 19 points to 12. I was kind of waiting for the Ospreys guys to wake up because, like I mentioned, bang, 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 the, the Connick guys have been scoring. But they, they did seem to kind of wake up a little bit. Walsh takes a shot at a droppy with advantage. He misses it. Um, they've got a five-meter line-out. What can they do? Uh, Buckley wins a turnover for Connick. So kind of, um, yeah, at least the Ospreys by that point, having been seemingly either asleep or under the pump for, for large periods, are actually... Able to put some pressure back on. Game becomes a bit of an arm wrestle. Keelan Giles, who's had no ball, uh, gets himself a nice line break, but his his pass uh, goes forward. It's one of those kind of 50-50 ones where maybe you think, just hang on to it, but that's easy to say. In hindsight, um, the Ospreys managed to stop a Connick Maul, 
But, I mean, Jack Cardi does show his class uh, when the game does become that bit of an armrest. I mean, he's much more experienced than his Osprey's counterpart, right? Um, he's just pulling the strings. He's finding the space between Nagy and Giles at the back for, for the Ospreys. He nails his drop goal when they've got advantage. So it's 10-point lead, 22-12. Um, and it looks like Connick are probably just going to see out the game, potentially chase that bonus point. But to the Ospreys' credit, kind of from nowhere when Porch spills the ball in goal with Keelan Giles putting heaps of pressure on him, um, it gives the Ospreys a chance to have a five-meter scrum. And um, that leads to a few phases. And Sam Perry up against Jack Carty, as good as Jack Carty's been, um, when he's defending one meter out from his own line against the opposition hooker, uh, it's probably only going to end one way. And sure enough, Perry goes over for the try. So suddenly it's 19 points to 22, good conversion from the Ospreys. And um, man, that's game on for the final, you know, final 10 minutes or so. Um, but yeah, the Ospreys guys seem to try to get into a bit of a boot battle with Jack Carty and... That's, that's kind of a hard one to win. Um, by 79 minutes, the Ospreys did get a scrum penalty. They had to go about 50 metres because time was up. And did they ever look like doing it? Not really. They were pretty much getting pushed backwards by the Ospreys. Not the Ospreys, the Connick defence. Uh, eventually, a little dink over the top to Morgan Morris did work, but he ended up knocking it on when he got tackled. So, yeah, a bit of a weird one. Ospreys get a losing bonus point, so that's that's something. But you're twelve nil up after ten minutes. You probably want more from that. Um, yeah, the Connick guys when they went bang bang bang, kind of be a little bit disappointed they didn't push on. So it's kind of that weird result where I don't think either side's completely happy. Although Connick um, bagging away win, so it's kind of hard to complain too much. Possession uh, ends up finishing in the Ospreys' favor because they did have a fair bit of ball in that second half, but the territory is still controlled by Connick. I give Jack Carty a lot of credit for that. Run meters finishes 316 to 305, so pretty tight, not much in it. Turnovers won 8 to 5 in Connick's favor. Kicks from hand 4138. That's a lot of a lot of boot to ball. Um, tackling percentages are both in the 80s, uh, with Connick having to make a few more tackles, but at a lower overall percentage. Individuals. Hawkshaw, uh, is this the first time I've seen him play for Connick? Probably not, but um, he's looking a pretty good acquisition, isn't he? 70 metres, five defenders beaten. Morgan Morris, 76 metres for him. Four defenders beaten, not bad for a Lucy. 12 carries. Uh, Connor Oliver makes 17 tackles. Ethan Roots makes 14 tackles despite sitting on the bench uh, for 10 minutes with that card. Jack Cardi, 26 kicks from hand. Um, 20 passes, just pulls the strings, man. Proper, proper experience campaign. Good to have the likes of him, uh, you know, running the show when you sides are all missing their internationals but um yeah obviously the uic takes a wee break now until the end of november but the ospreys when they do resume will be in south africa to play the bulls so pretty tough ass because the bulls at home have been looking the business and uh Connick will go away to munster but there you go folks that's how my morning went with um a bit of an arm wrestle between these two sides what did you reckon about the game key performers, key moments and whatnot. Um, let us know your thoughts and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.